In this ICT basics video, I want to go over limit order entries. Uh, I've talked about entering in on stops, I've talked about entering in at the market, and I do want to have a video where I'm covering uh, entering in on a limit order. Um, I don't want to pretend like that option is not available to you and that it can't be done. So I want to give you a few different entry, uh, entry mechanisms that you can use to enter in on a limit order. And I want to talk about some of the different levels that you can use to enter in on a limit order. Are you kind of blindly guessing when you enter in on a limit? Sort of, sort of not. Uh, you have to use, you know, I get a lot of questions like, well, how do you know which level to use? Guys, it just takes a lot of context um, and, and experience and sometimes some luck. I don't know what else to say. So a few of the different levels that you can use. Um, first off, let's talk about the consequent encroachment of a wick. So let's get in here on the two hour chart and let's talk about where you can enter in on the consequent encroachment of a wick. Let's get to the 30 minute chart. Let's see if we have any examples. Okay guys, the consequent encroachment of a wick is the 50% point of a long wick. Now a long wick, according to Michael Huddleston or ICT, is an inefficiency and the market treats that as a gap. So, what you want to do, guys, is I have a drawing here that I always use uh, all the time. I've got two different ones, 25, 50, and 75%. There, it's a fib retracement tool, so you can see uh, it's a fib retracement. I have 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. You have two different levels on a long wick. So let's say you identify a long wick, which is an inefficiency, and let's say that you want to enter in on a limit order on that. Two different levels, or really three, that you can enter on. The first is the 25%, which is your most aggressive entry. Then you have your consequent encroachment, which is the 50%. And then you have the 75%, which is going to be an aggressive, you know, you're, you're placing a limit at the 75%. That may or may not get filled. Uh, if you do get filled, you're probably going to get a pretty good entry. If you don't, you know, you might, but you might also get ticked out and might miss the market. So usually, guys, I'm going to say if you're going to enter in on a wick, uh, you should probably enter in at the 25% or the 50%. So consequent encroachment of a wick or entering in on a, entering in on a long wick inefficiency, um, you want to enter in at the 25 or the 50. Uh, sometimes you could get away with entering in on the, uh, the 75. Okay, guys, so those are wick entries. Again, a wick entry is where you identify a long wick, for example, here, and you enter in on a limit order right at the 25% or at the 50%. So you're just waiting at the limit order at the market. Um, any other examples of a long wick? Let's see if I can find one on the NASDAQ. Not on the 30 minute chart. Let's see if I can find one on the hourly chart. One that actually, you know, worked out. Okay, I can't find any right now on the NASDAQ. Um, let's see if we can find one on the Russell 2000. Yeah, so there was one here. You could have entered in uh, here. Now, you would have had to have a stop loss pretty far low, like 10 points lower, but you would have made profit, obviously, if you'd enter in on this wick down at the bottom. So your wick entries are pretty extreme, right? You're really betting that the market is going to turn around at an extreme point, okay? So those are your wick entries. This would have been a good wick entry here. You can see 25, 50, 75. So you can see we just tagged, let's see, the high of that candle was 13.3. You would have been uh, entered in at the market literally right at that wick, 25% of that wick. Okay, guys, so those are wick entries where you can enter in at the 25, the 50, or the 75 of a long wick. Now let's talk about uh, order block entries. Okay, guys, so whenever you identify an order block, it's the same thing as with an inefficiency. You can place... Um, you can place a limit order at the 25, the 50, or the 75% of an order block and look to be filled. Uh, look to be filled on that. So let's see. Let's see if I can find a regular trading hours example, maybe. Okay. Here's an example. So use the body of a candle. This actually would have been a good wick entry. You see here, 25% of that wick would have been a good entry there. Let's say you, use, you want to use the body of the, whenever you're using an order block, you want to use the body of the candle. You enter in at the 50% of that order block, your stop goes down here, and you would have been filled on a profitable trade. There was an example. Um, any one of these black candles is an order block. 
this candle was an order block. You put a limit order there, you're filled here. So guys, you can enter in at the 25, the 50, or the 75% of an order block uh, in the same way that you can a wick. You just place a limit order at that location and you can see anywhere here, yeah, you would have taken drawdown, but it would have been a profitable trade. Okay, so you have to, again, you have to use your greater context. So in order to get the direction right, you know, you have to use greater context. Four hour chart here, you can see a wick example uh, on the regular trading hours. See electronic, see, uh, this would have been an order block. So 50% 50, 50 almost got to the 75%. We might get there later, but 50% you're filled in on a short. So order block mean threshold or order block 25% is another limit order entry that you can use. Again, you got to use context with this, guys. You got to look at your liquidity, look at your higher time frames to, to take a guess like what's going to be the best level to probably enter in on a limit order. And there's no guarantees that the market's actually going to make it to fill your order. There's no guarantees. But if you do get filled on a limit order, they tend to be your best entries. Okay, uh, so we've talked about WIC entries. We've talked about order block entries. Let's talk about fair value gap entries. Let's see if we can find a good example. Let's get down to the 15-minute chart. Okay. So our handy dandy uh, quartering tool, there's our fair value gap, guys. You can enter in at the 25% of a fair value gap, the 50%, 75%, or a full redelivery of the fair value gap. This would have also been a good order block entry here. So you can see an order block there, 50%, the market comes in, tags you long, and you have a huge massive trade. Um, but you could have also entered in on this fair value gap. Does every fair value gap work? No, no. Not every fair value gap entry is going to work. You have to get the direction right. Okay, so a fair value gap entry, for example, here, here's a fair value gap. You enter in at the 50% or the 25%, and you can see that the market, this was at the very end of Friday, you would have to held over the weekend, but if you did, there was a 10 point trade there. So fair, those are fair value gap entries. Okay, so we've talked about fair value gap entries right there. There's another example of market comes back, redelivers a fair value gap. I believe you would have also gotten in on an order block entry right there, 25% of that order block or even higher. Okay, so you can, you can use the quartering tool, the 25% tool on a number of different levels. All right, so we've talked about WIC entries. Number one, so if in case you're keeping track, we've talked number one about WIC entries on a limit order. We've talked about order block entries on a limit order. We've talked about fair value gap entries on a limit order. Now let's talk about, um, now let's talk about inverted fair value gap entries. So an inverted fair value gap entry would look something like where a sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency takes you higher or where a buy side imbalance sell side inefficiency takes you lower. So for example, here was an inverted fair value gap right here. See the market comes back <clears throat> and then goes much higher, right? So there's your inverted fair value gap right there. Where would you place your limit order? Again, with an inverted fair value gap, like with any other PD array, you can put it at you can put your limit order at the 25, the 50, or the 75 percent. I'd usually recommend, guys, if you're going to try and use limit orders, um, accept some amount of drawdown. Don't go for like perfect entries. Go for entries that are actually going to get filled. So usually, I would go with the 25 percent because you know you're you're more likely to get filled on that. So here was an inverted fair value gap, 25 percent. You see, you get filled. Okay, so we've talked about WIC entries, we've talked about order block entries, we've talked about fair value gap entries, we've talked about inverted fair value gap entries. Now let's talk um, about, guys, there are some other forms of gaps that you should be aware of. Uh, let's talk about the opening range gap entries. So wherever you have an opening range gap, you set your, your trading hours to regular trading hours. You can also enter in on a regular trading hours gap in the same way that you would a fair value gap or any other gap. Um, 
So for example here, regular trading hours, if you enter in at the 50% of the RTH gap or the opening range gap, you got filled on a beautiful trade. Um, even here, for example, if you were quick enough on it, regular trading hours gap, and you get filled right at the 25% on that little uptick there, that would have been another trade. So you can use the regular trading hours gap as an entry. Um, and you can invert the regular trading hours gap as well. So you can use the regular trading hours gap as an entry mechanism. Uh, you can basically use it as a fair value gap or as an inverted fair value gap, depending on which direction you think that the market is going to ultimately go. Okay, so we talked about regular trading hours gaps. All right, now let's talk about some other entries. Um, see if we can find a breaker block. So you have a low, a high, and a lower low. You can enter in on a on a breaker block retest. So that's another option available to you. They're not my favorite pattern. I don't particularly use them all the time. Okay. And then finally, you know, I I do want to talk about turtle soup entries, guys. So you can always place a limit order above an old high or below an old low and bet that the market is going to fail and go in the other direction. Are you always going to be right? No. But that's another option available to you. It's called a turtle soup entry. It's where you just literally one tick above a prior high, you place a limit order. One tick below a prior low, you place a limit order and you're basically like market making or you're just betting that the market is going to reject a new high, reject a new low. And sometimes that's going to work out for you. So there's, that's another way you can use a limit order. Um, and also, guys, you can use an inverted wick. So we talked about an inverted wick here. You can see the market came back up. This would be an order block or an inverted wick. And you use the same 25, 15, and 75% principle I've been talking about here. You would have been filled all the way up at the 75. I would have recommended to get filled at the 25%. But in any event, you would have been filled on an inverted wick. So... The entries that I've covered for limit order patterns, wicks, order blocks, fair value gaps, inverted fair value gaps, regular trading hours gaps, and inverted wicks. Uh, and I'm just using the same 25, 50, and 75% uh, that I have been prior. So, Okay, guys. Um, I think those are all the different patterns that I want to cover. There's obviously also breaker blocks. I've also talked about turtle soups. So um, basically all you do with a limit order is you take your best guess in which direction you think the market is going to travel using your higher time frames, using your liquidity concepts, and then you find a, uh, an appropriate PD array. So again, just to recover the levels I've talked about, talked about turtle soups above old highs, below old lows. I've talked about fair value gap entries, talked about order block entries, wick entries, inverted wick entries, regular trading hours entries. Um, <clears throat> and we did mention that you can also enter in on a breaker block retest as well. So guys, your limit order entries, um, are you kind of, kind of guessing? Yes. But this is, for example, where you're going to get your absolute best entries. So for example, this fair value gap here, you can see the market. If you would have just placed a limit order right at that 25% of that fair value gap, you're filled and you have your best entry. So guys, th this is really where you get your best entries. There's no other way for me to put that. Uh, you, you're not going to be fast enough on the trigger, trigger usually to enter in at the market at the absolute best price. If you want to get your best entries um, and probably stop over trading, you have to use limit orders. Um, it does, it's not the only way to trade. I'm not saying it is the only way to trade. But if you want to get your best entries, you want to be at the, in the market at the absolute, like really where you want to get your best entries, you have to use a limit order. You're not going to be fast enough on the, uh, on the market button really to enter, enter in at these particular levels, uh, usually where the market has been inefficient or the market has been illiquid. The market's going to travel quickly through those areas. And if you want to get filled at, at the best prices, you're going to have to use a limit order. Uh, you're just going to have to sit and wait for the market to come up and fill you or to come down and fill you. And there's no other way uh, for you to do that because you're, you're not going to be at your screen all the time uh, and you're not going to be fast enough on the market button 
uh, to get filled at the best prices. You're just not. Uh, the market the market's going to be illiquid. It's just going to jump up and down way too fast for you to actually execute the order. So you have to be filled in on a limit. There's no other way uh, when you're trying to get filled at the best entries. So, all right, guys. Um, in this video, and I'll show you an example of a position that I'm in now, where I entered in on a uh, on a limit order. Okay, guys. So this is uh, a limit order that I in I entered in on, and you can see I'm on the micro Russell. All I did is I I took this long wick inefficiency, I put it into quarters, and you can see I entered in at the 25 percent 1910 spot five. I'm aiming for 50 percent of this long wick inefficiency. It's 1899 spot nine. Guys, there's no way I could have gotten this entry in at the market. The market uh, basically popped up there way too quickly for me to actually enter in that order manually. So I had to enter in on a limit order. And the advantages of using limit orders, guys, is if you're only using limit orders, you're probably not over trading um, because you're just having to sit and wait a lot. Um, if you're only in entering in on limits, uh, you're very unlikely to be over trading, uh, basically because you're just sitting and waiting a lot. Now, the 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 issue with limit orders, nothing is perfect in trading, guys. Everything is a give and take. Everything is a balance. Um, you're going to be doing a lot of waiting. If you're sitting and, and you're waiting for the market to come in and fill you, you're going to be doing a lot of waiting, which is probably a good thing, especially if you're inclined to gamble, if you're inclined to over trade, if you're over leveraging, you should probably uh, start using limit orders and only enter in on limit orders. If, if that is your issue with trading, if that's why you're losing money, you know it. Like I know, that's why I lose money. I over trade, I over leverage. So if I know that, then the limit orders are probably going to prevent me from blowing through accounts, right? If you know that you're gambling, if you know that you're over trading, try only entering in on limit orders and you won't be in the market as often. Uh, but the positions that you do get in, if, you, if you've picked the good level, so like for example, here in the micro Russell, there is a good fair value gap. You enter in at the 50% or the 25%. You got to wait for the market to open the next day. You're not trading all overnight. Um, and then you get filled in on this candle down or you got filled in uh, overnight and you had a good entry right there at this fair value gap. Okay. So, but if you had waited for the seat, if the market would come down to this fair value gap, you would have never been filled, which is probably okay. I mean, if you thought that the market was going to come back down and you didn't get filled, you miss out on a day of trading, but at least you didn't lose money. Um, we had another good example of entering in on a fair value gap right there. So 50% of that buy side inefficiency or 25%. Again, you're filled in on a good, on a good entry. Um, this move down, let's see. There was a fair value gap right there. You enter in on the 25% or the 50% or even it, it fully redelivered and you get a good movement down. So most of the time when, the, when you see that the market is is reversing guys it's usually going to be at some sort of ICT PD array you're going to notice like hey that's a long wick that's a fair value gap that's an order block that's usually where the market turns you're going to be able to identify something um, so if you're trying to prevent over trading if you're trying to save your money if you're trying to execute fewer trades my recommendation would be look into using limit orders only in, in terms of your entries and um, that'll probably save you a lot of money I'm not going to lie. It's probably going to save you a lot of money and you're going to get better entries when you do get filled because you're going to be sitting and waiting for the market to come back to a to a PD array that you're familiar with. Um, and you'll avoid some of the some of the chop. So, all right, guys, in this ICT basics video, I covered the concept of entering in on a limit. I told you some different levels to think about. You're still going to have to use other concepts, guys. You're going to have to use greater context. You're going to have to have an idea of in which direction the market is likely to travel next. There's no way to get around that. You can't just blindly put limit orders all over the place. You have to actually put some thought into what the market's going to do. Um, and you might have to get lucky. There's no other way for me to put that. Um, however, if you get skilled with limit orders, you're not going to trade as much. You're not going to be over trading. And as long as you use risk management on top of that, like only using your overnight margins and trading small, 
uh, this is a this is a very excellent way for you to stop over trading, lower your commissions, and probably get better entries as well. All right, guys. In this ICT Basics video, I covered the concept of using uh, limit order entries. Bye bye.